Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Peripherals. This week on Boss Battle. Welcome everybody to Boss Photo number 120, a show in which the writers of InsertCointToBegin.com get together to talk about video games. I'm your host, Bobby F. J. Tom, but before we get to the cryptic fortune in this fortune cookie of a podcast, let's find out what everybody achieved this week. Chachi, how about you? What did you achieve? <laughs> it was another food one, I know. No, I couldn't no, think of like, anything. It's not even that. It was what it was. I had this all... I was all... It was, it was a cryptic fortune. I was all... Genius face pose going on, and then you hit me with that and threw everything. It, um, down. it made you stop thinking. It did. I, I played some uh, Plants vs. Zombies 2, um, The Tower, Tapped Out, um, Phase 10, and uh, Call of Duty. Awesome. Um, played multiplayer mode. I don't hate it still. That's good. Uh, did you see the forklifts? I did not. Um, but then again, I don't spend my time in Call of Duty looking for, for uh, excuse me, forklifts. That's what I do. That's what um, I spend my time doing in any yeah, game. That's, that's why you're not very good at it. That's why That's why I've been wandering around in Dragon Age trying to find forklifts. <laughs> There's I no just can't find in Dragon Age. <laughs> I can't find any. But no, that, that's about all I did. Um, yeah, that's about it. Awesome. All right, um, uh, Sorg, what did you achieve this week? Uh, not a lot of video games. We were doing a big conference over the weekend. A little bit detached. From, I didn't even get any super card in for the for the most part. Oh no! So yeah, that's, that's yeah. Shame. Sorry I started guys. Sorry, I, I'm I'm I just fell off the cliff on that one. But uh, but I hope to get into some stuff uh, this weekend for Thanksgiving. So, awesome. Yep. Yeah, we got a long break here. Yep. So. All right, uh, joining us once again, our special guest this week, Mad Mike. Matt, Mike, what did you, what'd you achieve? Um, I am currently oscillating between going to different Lantern worlds in Lego Batman 3, um, also talking to Conan O'Brien. He's a very nice man. <laughs> and um, I'm playing a lot of eight-person Smash, which I will get into later. Nice. All right, uh, for, from uh, Twitter... Or Facebook or the or Facebook group comment. Uh, Wheels said he's playing WWE 2K15 and he's starting to be okay with it for now. Uh, from the chat room, uh, Buddy Landell said uh, he's one of the best Destiny PS4 players in the world, and a lot of people watch his Twitch stream. And he's reached level four in the Iron Banner, so that's good. Kudos to him. Um, I achieved this week. I played. Uh, I got Dragon Age uh, Inquisition, and I started playing it. Um, my character looks like he should be in a Middle Ages boy band, uh, but he's the badass in the group because he has a scar over his eye. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, uh, been playing Dragon Age. I uh, played a little bit of Sunset Overdrive too, uh, and uh, started uh, started Assassin's Creed. Uh, it's okay so far. So. All right, uh, we have a new segment we'd like to, to start this week. Uh, the Twitter question of the week, it comes from Buddy Landell. Uh, at Landell3, you can give him wow, a follow. I got bumped. Uh, how do you, he, he <laughs> writes to us, how do you guys think a Call of Duty MMO would do? That's his question. Uh, can I kick it off? Yeah, go ahead. Um, honestly, I think it would do horribly. Because, okay. um, I mean, look at Destiny. Um. Sure, it started off great, but now the flare is all gone. Um, and no war lasts forever. So, uh, I mean, the MMO would have to end eventually. Tell that to half the countries in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to say something like that. But, I, I mean, it would end up, and this is going to be an obscure, nerdy reference, mm -hmm. but um, the episode of Doctor Who where they uh, clone him the daughter. Yes. One of my would favorites. end up like that. Yeah. That would be. Where everyone's dying every 17 days. Yeah. I and mean, you get have to make new people by poking somebody in the, the finger. Right. And getting blood. <laughs> so I, I just don't think it would uh, it would maintain. Um 
Plus, I mean, you kind of already have an MMO. It's just the same mission over and over and over, yeah. and over and over again with the multiplayer. It would be interesting to have, like, how World of Warcraft and stuff like that have massive worlds. Like, Call of Duty could be just one giant just battlefield. Not to be confused with Battlefield, the game, <laughs> which is about cops and robbers now, which makes no sense. Well, um, no, but... they, uh, they said that they, there would be a military mode in Battlefield. Oh, there is? Oh, okay. Yeah. Because that makes sense as well. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mike, you have anything to add to this? Um, I was kind of in line with Chachi. Because it seems like like I'm not a huge MMO guy mm-hmm. myself, but it seems like with MMOs, there's kind of no end game for those. Mm-hmm. And with Call of Duty, it has like very linear storylines, things of that nature. Like I think it's the same reason something like uh, like you couldn't have a WWE MMO. Because eventually, like, people retire, people yeah, die. Was, yeah, you're you're a wrestler wrestling. gets old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that's just going to happen eventually. Yeah, Not in, everyone is Ric Flair. In game, and in, in, in games though, people can live pretty much forever. I mean, guys don't get old. Like my, my Call of Duty player isn't that old. Yeah. You know? Yet. <laughs> Yet you, yeah. You put him in an MMO. <laughs> I mean, I'm rock, I'm, I'm rocking soap here. So hey, you put him in a MMO, his body's gonna start <laughs> like the Necro Butcher's forehead. All right. <laughs> oh man. Um, another thing about MMOs, like you, you guys said, I'm not. I I don't really play the MMOs that often either. Because when I get into MMOs, I turn into a turtle and like just go into my show and just want to be by myself. Like I don't. I don't like to interact with other people in MMOs. <laughs> That's kind of like the point of the game. I don't know. I'm just backwards and shy. I'm not allowed to play MMOs anymore because I have an addictive <laughs> personality, and that's kind of all I do if I'm playing an MMO. We've heard about your addictive right. MMO personality. I, I have to keep reminding you guys because it reminds me, and then I no longer want to play the MMO anymore. Mm-hmm. You guys are my support group. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Just like you guys are my intervention group for yes. beating video games. <laughs> Did you beat a video game this week, Bobby? No, I have not. But I will beat one by the end of the year. I'm my my goal is to beat Dragon Bobby. Age Inquisition by the end of the year. I will have it Bobby. beaten. I've it's beaten the previous two, so it's good. November twenty fifth. Yes. In the the amount of time between now and the end of the year. I could probably beat like six video games. I know, but I'm at a slower pace when it comes to video games than you guys are. Bob, Bobby. I promise by Christmas I will beat a game. That gives Bobby. me one month from today. Yes. <laughs> You're never going to beat Dragon Age if you keep looking for forklifts. I know. But <laughs> but somebody somebody found an Easter egg that is a pie with a top hat on, and they call him Lord Pie. They fell through oh. the ground and, fell, and found them, so. Um, Sork, do you have anything to add to the uh, COD MMO? Um, I think um, I, I I think I could. S- I, I don't know where the MMO I, again. Not having experienced Destiny, I don't know how that kind of interweaves everything. Um, but the way Call of Duty, I feel like the Call of Duty gameplay would have to change. Um, it's it's kind of made for that instance of drop in, kill things, get killed, and level yeah. up your guy. Um, I like. Are you traveling to instances? You know, how does that work? Um, yeah, but but if they figured it out as far as the well, your guy gets old, da 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 da. Uh, you know, we're jumping back and forth in time and technology with the games from year year to year just to keep it fresh. Yeah. Now we do have the model where World of Warcraft uh, 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 comes out every few years with a new expansion pack that gives me you know, gives you a potential new entry point and kind of updates things and keeps it fresh. I mean, I, I, I imagine World of Warcraft more or less is not the same game it was what, 10 years ago when it started, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So I think I think that's like the kind of, like what if they turned your yearly Call of Duty release into a yearly expansion pack more or less? So it's not mm-hmm. just, well, now we can't play all this with our friends because we all bought the new one. Now it's like, well, what if you just collect on top. What if we could go back to Rust anytime we wanted, but with all the new features of the latest expansion pack? That would you know be what I mean? Amazing. Like, like, what about that kind of just, just like it, it builds on top of each other instead of in, being an individual thing? Um, you know, like I really liked uh, how they had the app and the elite, but that didn't carry over. 
and eventually there was a new app and then eventually none of your other stuff mattered anymore um so I think there may be a little bit of crossover, but mostly it was it was kind of a reset every time. But what if you could just build and build on top, just like achievements do with the Xbox uh, and and I think PlayStation trophies as well. So I, mm-hmm. I, that's my take on it. I, I, I'd like to see it in execution. I mean, I think I, ha- I have two more comments to add to this before okay. we can move on. I have uh, one question one. after you're done then. Okay, one. Uh, in order for that to work, Sorg, Activision would have to take over full time development solely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if you could really split studios as easily right. with that. But maybe, right. but maybe you still have other studios doing a more one-off uh, solution too. Maybe this becomes a whole other line of Call of Duty, uh, much like how Battlefield is diverted. You have Battlefield, and you have these bad company games that are completely different. Like maybe that it, it's it's just like a franchise spinoff of some sort. Right. So, um, and two, I swear to God, if I have to grind and craft my own. Uh, weapons and ammo. I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> yeah, I, am gonna be, with you. I am not gonna spend hours making <laughs> wet ammo for my AK. All right? It's just gonna be Call of Duty blacksmithing. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you're just that. gonna end up being gonna all the. You're just gonna end up being all the secondary characters in the Matrix Reloaded. <laughs> yes. I'm not like, doing. What are you doing? Making shells. Every making time you make shells. a combat knife, it goes. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I got one final serious question for you guys. If there were ever to be a Call of Duty MMO, would you guys be a part of my forklift ga- gang oh, for in sure. the countryside? For sure. I'm, I'm with you, Bobby. All right. If I were allowed to play, I'd be with you. We'll, we'll roll out with yeah. our forklifts. <laughs> All right, Josh, you want uh, to only, get- only if we could be called the forklift horsemen. There. There we go. All right, Josh, you want to take us around the net? Sure. It is time for video game theme things from around the internet. No. Net, 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 net. Let's start with the runners up this week. Um, so both of these are really, really good. I didn't feel right putting them in the runners up. I just couldn't find anything else to put in runners up, and I didn't want to cut it. Um, so first up, there's a Kickstarter that I would actually support called Wow Mom. Wow, mom. <laughs> um, it's a documentary about a grandmother who uses World of Warcraft to cope with her life-threatening cancer. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, cool. It's at $23,186 of a $45,000 goal. I hope they make it. Um, with 16 days to go. And essentially what it is is it follows her through the process of uh, treatment and dealing with her cancer. Um, and it's got a lot of great backers. Um, Chris Hardwick and the Nerdist channel uh, among them are. I, be- uh, I bet you if it doesn't reach its goal, they'll they'll pick it up. Yeah, yeah. I've heard, I, I, I've heard Chris talking about it. Like, I don't see this uh, being passed up at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it, they have a trailer over. Uh, it's I have it in the uh, the post on insertcointobegin dot com. Um, but yeah, it's it. I'm actually going to support this one, mm-hmm. um, which is amazing if you don't know me because fuck Kickstarter, all right? <laughs> Chachi, Chachi got mad at potato salad and is no. now in the same sense. No, screw this, all right? <laughs> um, but yeah, this one I can't, I can't pass. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Um, next up. Uh, Pikachu can be pretty much the devil. Um, when he's glitching. Oh, when he's glitching. Um, Four minute and 20 second long video of just different uh, glitches that happened while these guys were playing uh, Hey You Pikachu. I love that Hey You Pikachu (laughs) made this. Uh, I'm I'm shocked we haven't gotten a new version of that for Wii U. I'm shocked. Give it time. Give it time. Um, But yeah, there are some scary glitches in there that will give you nightmares. No. Um, And let's get to the... uh, Let's get to the, the, the beef of this uh, taco. What? What? The beef of this taco of a, of a, of a post. What? It, was, it was a fortune cookie. I'm not allowed to make up my own food analogy. It's, it's okay. It's food. I'm it's pretty okay. sure you didn't make up tacos. Well, no, I'm just... <laughs> Josh, I invented tacos. I did. I did. I, I'm, I'm mounting it here and now. Taco I inventions. Tacos. Um, but I... Uh, 
Uh, first up, fans made a GTA 5 wildlife documentary. Um, <laughs> it's a documentary that covers the oceanic wildlife of Los Santos and Blaine County. I hope it's that dinosaur in Jurassic Park trailer. <laughs> um, it is no in no way, shape, or form accurate, and it's <laughs> just pretty much hilarious. Is um, it like Jacques Cousteau? Yeah. So. Oh, yes. Uh, 1338 seconds, uh, definitely worth watching. Is it Ocean <laughs> Live? Uh, next up. Um, so, would you guys... Uh, be willing to give your own blood while playing nope. video games. And, and we're actually going to talk about this a little more in depth later. Okay. Uh, but, um, yeah. So is this like <laughs> those anti-smoking commercials where you peel off the skin only and stuff? Oh, we're going to need you to add something to this freemium game. Please insert your <laughs> needle. No. Uh, no, if we're going to if we're gonna cover it later, then I'll, I'll leave it for later. Um, but I, I couldn't pass this up. It's yeah, just it was, it was too... a good one. It is too fucked up to pass up. Yeah, too creepy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll leave this for later. Uh, but there, I have the Kickstarter video in the, the post as well. Um, over at Instagram. Hey, explain. We're talking about the giving blood uh, yeah. <clears throat> apparatus yeah, yeah, for playing video peripheral, games. Peripheral. Yeah. The word of the week. <laughs> yeah. So but, uh, the, and, and if, Bobby has it, if Bobby has it set in the show later, I don't want to spend too much time on it. We'll talk about it then. Okay. Um, and then next, uh, last but not least... Uh, in 2009, fans started making their own Legend of Zelda full feature film. Uh, they got entirety of it filmed and were in the final process of production. And Nintendo found out. Oh, no. Uh-oh. And they said no. It was rotten bastards. Um, and I'm so sorry, it, Reggie, don't hit me. Yeah, it, uh, the ed- the editing and final touches were never finished. Um, however, it's on YouTube. Nice. And now all one hour, 48 minutes of it is in the post. Um, I haven't watched it yet. You can bet your sweet ass that I will watch it, uh, no matter how bad it is. So, um, Hopefully if you have two hours to kill, go for it. And that is all I have for you in this week's video game theme things from around the internet. Net, 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 net. net, net. net. Back to you, Bobby. All right. It's time to uh, get to some things you should be made aware of. Uh, first up, some news bits. Guys, do you like Assassin's Creed? I do like Assassin's Creed, Bobby. Well, guess what? What? Got to start gearing it towards kids, maybe. Oh, yay. <laughs> um, That's I, just bad parenting. Yannick Spagna, uh, that's the guy's name, uh, said on a panel, uh, Assassin's Creed, uh, they will do a line with, or they already do a line with Mega Bloks together. Um, it's mm-hmm. nice because the toys are looking for hype around video games, and we are looking for a new audience. Kids, children, it's more like that, he said. Uh, the quote is not about Assassin's Creed the game, it's about Assassin's Creed the brand. Um, what they're trying to say is, um, like Lord of the Rings has their Lego games. Assassin's Creed could maybe make games geared towards kids and have that Assassin's Creed brand, but not make them super violent like the Assassin's Creed's game. Oh, if man. You, you, you man. Lego Assassin's Creed, could you imagine? Um, I, okay. I have to say, as an, as an expert in this field, the Assassin's Creed Mega Blocks toys are mm-hmm. adorable. Hmm. They're, and I'm they're not fantastic. doubting that. I, I'm not doubting that at all. Like, a little... EZL, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm sure it's the cutest little thing in Mega Block. Mm. However, can I point out that the name of the game Assassin's has Creed. the word assassin in it? Yeah. 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 So oh. what? Instead of being assassin, you but, uh, but you're a farmer. You can but still I be an will... assassin and be a little bit nicer about it. I will say though, um, this is. Is a good idea, like if they could like somehow make it nonviolent towards kids. <laughs> Don't uh, you, like widows is a it could it could yes, it could but <laughs> I, 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 I am not arguing with you on that point. However, uh, in the in the Lego Marvel game, she's not really an assassin. All she does is knock around some blocks. Well that's and what they're saying here too. The Marvel movies aren't necessarily geared towards children. Children True. just happen True. to go see them. Um, 
but uh, one good thing this could do for kids is could teach them about history a little bit, you know? I mean, the games are kind of quasi-educational a little bit. A yeah, little I'm bit. I'm stretching it here. Um, I don't know if you're going into a seventh grade social studies class and you want to say that, oh, yeah, well, I mean, General Lee was assassinated by one rogue assassin <laughs> who's, who stuck a pin through his neck and watched his blockhead pop off. There's historical figures and stuff like that. I mean, it, it works on some levels. I, um, I think if they if they somehow turned it into a puzzle game, um, with like the yeah. pieces of Eden puzzles, that would, yeah, where you're just idea. putting like together pieces of art, that would oh, be fun. Also, are, are you saying we're gonna you want to Assassin's Creed bejeweled? No, okay. I don't want this. I want oh. Assassin's Creed to stay the same. But oh. if they're gonna push this towards kids and turn it into a goddamn mega block convention, then go for it. Also, um, uh, uh, Car- Carmen San Diego didn't actually go back in time and steal things, so that could be, you know, <laughs> it's it's an Elseworld tale, I guess. <laughs> um, but the the one really good quote here that this Yannick Spagna said is, uh, "I played hours and hours of Lego Lord of the Rings, and you kill people, but not kill people because they're Lego characters." <laughs> right, you don't kill people in Lego games; you just knock them apart. You knock them apart. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean. <laughs> I'm sure if you drop a Lego guy from high enough, he'll, his pieces will fall off. Yeah, pretty oh, much. Yeah, absolutely. So, I I mean, they also have, like, have Call of Duty zombie mega blocks. My Lego guy That's just jumped into a bell of hay. Uh, all of these are horrible ideas. I'm just throwing it out there. There are just some <laughs> things that aren't meant to be geared towards children. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, no, can we move on to the next thing? Yes, we can. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Go ahead. Um. Guys, Halo's been having some problems recently. Um, and a letter from 343 Industries studio head Bonnie Ross, uh, she personally apologized on behalf of the studio, saying the developer the developer is committed to working around the clock until the Master Chief's collections issues are resolved. Uh, they had a lot of issues with matchmaking and multiplayer games. Um, people were having like when the game first launched, people were like complaining about like long load times for m- matches. Uh, where they, people weren't getting kicked out, they weren't getting connected. Um, but they said they're working on multiple server-side tweaks and game content updates over the coming weeks, uh, including one that's on track for this week. Uh, long-term, Ross says that 343 plans to make this right with Halo fans. Um, I know a lot of us don't really play Halo, but it's good to see they're trying to make strides to, to fix the problems with the game. Even though the game is like kind of older multiplayer game, like maps and stuff. I, I, I wonder if this you you you, you kind of wonder if this is a little bit of the handoff to three four three from Bungie, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, yeah, because they were all Bungie games except yeah. for four. So so maybe something collection. dropped there. Maybe this speaks to three four studio three four three studios. Maybe this speaks to something wrong with the new way that yeah. uh, Microsoft does things. Um, because uh, I li- uh, one of the windows, the Microsoft shows I listened to talks about, you know, one of the big things they push with Xbox one, and we haven't heard too much about it yet is the, uh, the server side thing that they, they promoted when they first announced it. Remember? Mm-hmm. Um, and they're using these Azure servers that, that, that's something that's trying to also sell to the enterprise. And I'm wondering there might be, maybe there's something going on in that side of things where they're, they're doing this, this work, uh, for the, for the matchmaking and everything. Cause it sounds like it's all online stuff. So that's the issue. Uh, so. yeah, it's, it's like all the new, the servers server sides yeah you know yeah so so, so they, and i'm wondering because we've been hearing so much about issues and I, and I don't know if uh you know not think of, you know just off the top of my head i can't think if they were all microsoft issues or not um i know assassin's creed no, i be think a lot i think them. yeah like uh drive club was a uh, ps2 or ps4 yeah yeah they so. had trouble um um assassin's I, I, but i think consoles. both i think both consoles are really pushing um more of what happens on your console happens on the internet, and this is—I mm-hmm. think you know—we're—we're we're kind of it, it. That's where things get sketchy, as we talked about last week uh, extensively. Um, and I think it's going to be interesting to watch what happens there. You know, when it's when it is more than just putting a disc in my machine and it just works with what's in front of me. So uh, it, it'll be interesting to watch it, and I hope they do clear this up. Um, just as a just as a Halo fan, so. Mm-hmm. I still haven't opened Halo 4. I think it's just, it goes back to the quality assurance. Yeah. And, yeah. Between that and uh, not being able to truly test something until you 
completely max out the server. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So to unleash I, it, yeah. You know. And that's with everything. I mean, God, how many how many pro- how many problems have we been seeing with um, software updates with from both Google and Apple? I know Apple right, especially, yeah. but Google as well lately. Um, it, and, it's and not the, until it gets on a million devices that you see, oh, we have a problem on ten percent of the devices for some reason. You know, yeah. you, you just can't. You don't know until you reach those numbers, and and now, uh, unfortunately. Uh, it directly affects a, a, a performance where there's just somebody who is just used to a video game working, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, especially well, on like, consoles. Like we've said before on the show, we've reached the PC age of the console where you're going to have new patches every week. You're going to have updates. You're going to have, well, you know. Welcome it's welcome to 1996 updated. and video games, yeah, ladies exactly. and gentlemen. <laughs> welcome to when hey, I was playing a- Quake 1. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's, there's a patch for Laser Shoot Larry. On wait, Xbox wait, One. wait! I don't remember if my <laughs> Xbox has a Voodoo One or a Voodoo Two in it. Um, yeah, yeah. I, no, it's not that bad, obviously. But I mean, it, th- those those little nitpicky things that just happen when you open the system up like that. So, um, I, I just played a browser-based game in Net, Net, Netscape Navigator. <laughs> That's a callback to to early internet. It was kids. just a Minesweeper clone, but you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I uh, I miss those days. <laughs> you miss Netscape Navigator? <laughs> yeah, everything was so fun. Let me just hop I, on CompuServe. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, I think the problem is you have uh, these issues happening to the wrong people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it, like it, because the internet's a thing now, and it's apparently not going anywhere. Who knew? Um, you have people who are playing video games and they have a lot, a large audience. And so if they run into issues, then everyone's going to know. Um, so I, uh, we have the same, we have the same problem at the firm. Yeah. We have issues with with software that we roll out, (laughs) but we hope to God that it doesn't happen to the wrong people Mm -hmm. because that's when you run into problems. That's, that is the other no, I'm not getting to that side of things. Never mind. Never no. mind. That's a, that's an awesome cast discussion. Yeah, uh, but we're not. Yeah, wait, never mind. Uh, but Bobby, please take us to another one. I hey right, you, physics. Are you guys ready? To- a subject we all know something about physics. Yeah, physics. <laughs> um, Excuse me, I am a scientist. <laughs> you are. You are. You are. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, all right, but students. You're a chemist. At, <laughs> let's not Still get into name calling here. That's a science. <laughs> It's a science. It's not this science. No, it, well, it's kind of like this science, but smaller. Inaccurate science is in different podcasts. We're starting uh, later. <laughs> if you want to hear that, tune in. Um, anyways, uh, students at the Department of Physics and Astronomy in England's University of Leicester. Leicester, I guess. Did you get all yeah, that? British words are pronounced. That's a long uh, word. They have run the numbers on the Wii game. Uh, Super Mario Galaxy, uh, specifically the gravity and density of the game's tiny planets on which Mario runs around. Uh, and they find uh, that the nature of the galaxy is implausible at best. Uh, this is according to Polygon. Um, according to a, pi- a paper entitled, It's a Me, Destiny, uh, published at the University's <laughs> Journal of Physics, uh, Special <laughs> Subjects, Planets of Super Mario Galaxy and Mario Galaxy 2 would likely explode <laughs> due to the severe imbalance of gravitational pressure and uh, degeneracy of column pressures. Uh, when reached for a comment, Mario simply said, Wah! Okay. Um, can I point no out... Can I, can I, can I point I'm sorry, out I was that, uh, We're talking about the science of a Mario game. Um, yeah, exactly. Did, did I, they decide to do this study after doing a previous study on eating red and white mushrooms and discovering yes. that you don't grow twice in size? Uh, you do grow twice in size, but only in your mind because you're tripping balls. Um, yes. Also, Bobby, I'd I like, like to give a shout out. To you. you pulled a reverse George McFly, and I appreciate that. What doing what? Because it's the me density, and you said destiny. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's it. Yes, <laughs> I, I apologize. Well, I, I have Destiny on the brain because we were talking about Destiny earlier, and it is me, Destiny. <laughs> oh my! But the, there's planets in Destiny, and they, they would be fine because 
physics. Yeah, I mean, I don't like. Did anyone really expect Mario to be Interstellar? I know yeah. I didn't. I did. I feel the rest Tyson even has problems with Interstellar. So no, he actually, he treated time Interstellar out. really well. Time out. Time out. Since uh, since uh, colleges want to do studies, I want them to do a study on the, the feasibility of a, a jetpack water bag that Mario can wear on his back to clean up a goddamn planet <laughs> um, with. All right? um, yeah. I want Mario uh, to Chachi? wash the buildings downtown. Chachi? Chachi? Also, Chachi? Ghost um, they actually do activity. have. They actually do have water-powered jetpacks. All right, then yeah, carry on. That's a real thing. Like, is it actual flood exists? What about vacuum ghosts? Anything? I don't know vacuum the ghosts. feasibility on ghosts or their ability to be sucked up by vacuums. Okay. All we right. can agree to disagree. Okay, I don't know what All right. <laughs> uh, Sony is facing a lawsuit, everyone. Uh, Sony has agreed to settle with the Federal Trade Commission over claims that the company falsely advertised its PlayStation Vita console when it was first released in 2012. Uh, the uh, Vita ads, they deceived people into buying a product that didn't work as promised. Um, the ads said that you would never uh, never stop playing and showed users enjoying the remote play uh, and cross-save features uh, with real-time 3G features. But the FT FTC says that the, despite the ads' promises, customers really couldn't use any of the features <laughs> um, to the to the fullest. Uh, also, Sony didn't tell anybody that you actually had to have two copies of the same game for the feature to work. Um, and the live multiplayer gaming sessions, you had to have um, 3G for that, which cost an additional fifty dollars, and a lot of times didn't really work that well. Um, so yeah, like, kind of. Stretch the truth a little bit. <laughs> uh, what, where guys, where were they when the, portable gaming? Yeah, yeah, where were they when the Engage <laughs> came out? The the Engage, <laughs> the, the Taco Tech Taco. Yes, the Tech Taco. Oh, Taco. Uh, yeah, but um, <laughs> I I don't know. I don't know. Do you, I, do you, yeah. here, can uh, I can sorry. I put this just anecdotally? Do you know anybody that owns a PSP, let alone a Vita? I, I have I have two PSPs. What is wrong with you? I have two PSPs. One Bobby, I got you one I got for you? free. One I got for free from my friend Larry. Another one I had that I bought begrudgingly. I didn't buy it begrudgingly. I just bought it because it was new and that's the thing. You're not a happy I was owner of a PSP. A PSP. Okay, let's put it that way. You're here. And the other person I know that owns one, like, has a weird video game museum in his bachelor pad. So, and has That'll nuts work. about Sony. Uh, Chachi? Actually, <laughs> no, it's not Chachi. I have a PSP. <laughs> did you just remember you have a PSP? I did. <laughs> oh, you did you have, have a PSP? I, I, hey, to be you fair, I keep, I keep forgetting I, I have a Nintendo it. DS. So, I, I modded it. I played it for like a week. I put it in my drawer. I haven't touched it since. <laughs> That's what she said. I don't know why she would say that. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I, I, my, my friend has a PS Vita also, and he said it's okay. It's nothing special. Um, there, there are some cool things about it, but I, I don't know it. Like everything they promised, they really didn't deliver on. You know, um, there's finally starting to l deliver it, but you have to have a PS4 for it. So I mean. I don't know. I think the 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 lawsuit is justified. Uh, the PSP is like is truly the Sega Game Gear of this generation. Yeah. No, Sega Game Gear was good though, but it was a battery. I, I had a Game Gear. It, was it, it wasn't about box. the that the Game Gear oh. was good at what it does, but it was it wasn't what everybody wanted. Everybody wants a DS and playing mm -hmm. Mario and doing that on mobile, or everybody wants an iPhone that plays Candy Crush. Back then, everybody wanted something that did, lasted more than two hours on 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 a, a, a handful of batteries, and uh, and and their kids could play Mario on. You know, more than a I mean that, that that's what I'm yeah. I, I'm on for that. I, I'm not discounting the Game Gear for what it was. I have I, I ended up buying one late, uh, because and, and it, it's tremendous, right? But my rich cousins had it, not me. I had my Game Boy, you know. Um, you your, your, your rich cousins. Had yeah. it. Your rich cousins had it because they could afford a basket full of batteries. Exactly. <laughs> they could. Have, it, although I gotta say, when they brought it for Thanksgiving, we're still plugging that damn thing into the wall. So. 
<laughs> What'd you get for Easter? A basket full of batteries for my Game Gear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike, you want to talk a little? Bought Duracell. Oh, <laughs> Duracell. <laughs> All right, Mike. You want to t- tell us a little bit about your adventures in Smash Brothers and Eight Player Mayhem? Oh my God, Smash! All right, if you don't own a Wii U, first of all, hi, I'm Mad Mike. I'm a Nintendo guy. I own a Wii U. <laughs> if you don't own one and, and you like you like fighting games, especially ones where you can have eight people on a screen at once and <laughs> do all sorts of crazy that things. That sound fun. Oh my God, it's madness. It's sheer madness, and it's phenomenal. Um, I will say it's a little bit... Uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to because they have the screen pad out all the way. But luckily, on the gamepad, if you want a closer-up view of what your character is specifically doing, it's a more zoomed-in version. It, they probably look like 3DS, the 3DS character model, so they're really tiny. <laughs> a little bit. A little okay. bit, actually. Um the new, the new levels they have for it though they're specifically designed for the eight player battle mm-hmm. are pretty awesome. Is that uh, one the one with the, like the dragon in the background? I saw that one on the live stream. I yeah, that, that was pretty one, cool. That one's on there. Um, you can also they also have this one called the Great Cave Offensive, which is from a Kirby game, mm-hmm. and it's a massive level. And they have these uh, like you remember when you were a little kid and you would play the Floor is Hot Lava. Mm-hmm. This is an actuality of that game. Chachi still plays that at work. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> okay. I, I ride my office chair from my bed to my door, <laughs> and then I hop out the door. Okay. And then, you hit, well, and, then, and then you hit the lava and go, woo, like Mario. Yes. <laughs> wow! That's um, exactly why well, I have a separate office and bedroom, uh, because that's exactly <laughs> what I would do, too. That's just what, why I've never wanted a red carpet. It's also yeah. so dangerous. I have a wheelie chair on the top floor. Um, I got I got blue carpet. I'm gonna drown in a second. <laughs> My floor but, is um, water. But yeah, there are a whole bunch of areas in the Great Cave Offensive level that are literally like not lava, but almost instant death, <laughs> which is very interesting because you can knock people into them and they just explode. It's not even awesome. like a normal Smash Bros. thing where they like shoot off randomly into the stratosphere. They just stop. <laughs> um, but I've been playing the event modes. The event modes is exclusive for the Wii U version. It's a lot of fun. You actually have uh, there's a couple of challenges where you like you don't have to defeat someone. Like there's one with Jigglypuff where you have to go around a level and try to get everyone to fall asleep at once. <laughs> like that sounds fun. It is a hell of a lot harder. Smash game. Brothers Slumber Party. <laughs> yeah, it really kind of is. Like, and it's a lot harder than you'd think it would be. It's absolutely a lot harder. Um, they also have the Smash Tour uh, mm. mode, which is kind of like a mini Mario Party game mm. where you collect power-ups for your guy, uh, you collect fighters, and then at the end you have a big brawl, and whoever gets the most wins obviously wins, and you earn a whole bunch of trophies and power-ups and things of that nature. Um, I, the one thing I haven't tried yet, which I'm probably going to mm. tonight, is being able to use the 3DS as a, remo- as a controller. Oh, wow. I yeah. didn't do that. As long as you have uh, Smash Bros. for the DS and... Uh, Crossplay from the Vita. <laughs> but, but Nintendo actually gives you something for that. Because yeah. if you yeah. register both of them, you get Mewtwo and a soundtrack for free. Hey, they, yeah, which, which and, we know about Mewtwo. And Nintendo's and, played that game since the first Game yeah. Boy, let's be yeah. honest. Me and, my yeah, brother have, me and my brother acquired the second copy of Tetris and Dr. Mario and all that just, <laughs> just to do that, you know? So, hey, um, hey, sword. Can I point out that it was? It's only been like twelve years since we last did that in the living room of the apartment in Dormont. I think I feel like it was less than twelve years. <laughs> uh, it, uh, I think I think uh, maybe like eight years. For um, next year's Joshi plays, you should do a four link Tetris battle. Oh my God! Do who has a four link <laughs> adapter? My God, I got it. I don't even know if I have my Connect Four for the uh, for the uh, NES to play some uh, four player Gauntlet. Man, pretty sneaky sword. Yeah. Oh, that's the wrong Connect Four. That's the wrong Connect Four. That's the wrong Connect Four. What would they call it? The Four Score or something? 
I don't I don't remember. There was like two. There's a wireless. Hey, it was his whole other thing. There's a wireless and there's a wired one. I got the wired one because again, we were poor. We're gonna talk about peripherals later. So <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all about the peripherals. You get your NES advantage. You get your Nights After Dreams, uh, a special Saturn <laughs> controller over here. I don't think it really works. Um, we got a power pad. I got a power pad in the drawer, man. Should break that out oh, some chachi oh, plays. Oh, speaking speaking of peripherals, I have a question for Man Mike. Have you yes. used any of the amiibos yet? I am probably going to be purchasing an amiibo. Okay. Uh, I've been selling a lot of amiibos. I will tell yeah, you that. Yeah, they're going off the shelves fast. <laughs> it looks cool as hell. Uh, I, I I think I'm gonna have to get one. Um, it just looks fun. It looks like they're going to be uh, compatible with a whole bunch of games. Like I know the Mario Kart game. If you have uh, Mario and Donkey Kong, I, and basically. I don't like, have a I don't have a Wii U, and I want amiibos. <laughs> <laughs> like the I, figures yeah, yeah, me look too. nice. Like I feel like oh, I want to buy one just because. Completely. They are beautiful looking figures. Yeah. They're absolutely beautiful looking figures, and I, I think I'm gonna have to get at least one or two. I'm gonna wait till the second wave comes out and then buy from there. I think because the second wave comes out like next week or something like that. Okay. But um, and you can use it with the DS too, which is cool. Oh, nice. I didn't. Yeah. Know that. And, yeah, and it saves the data on your Amiibo, so you can bring it over to another friend's place that has a uh, Wii U, and your data is still there. So it's not like Skylanders or Destiny or anything like that. It actually ke- keeps your data within the figure. Cool. All right, uh, we're going to move on to our final round here. Um, our final round question is, what have some of your uh, favorite uh, or useless peripherals have been over the years? And we asked this because we talked about earlier, the uh, Kickstarter... <laughs> Uh, of the, what's it called? Bloodsport. Bloodsport, yes. Uh, the it, Kickstarter was actually suspended. Um, uh, the funding for the project claimed to match any match a console game tr- controller to a bl- blood collection unit uh, to draw blood from real-life competitors uh, in a game like Call of Duty whenever the player was shot in the game. Um, they stopped around $3,390 of their $250,000 goal. Oh, by the way, Canadian. Um, Canadian. Yes, yeah, Canadian, Canadian yeah, money. Yeah, it's not real money. It's Canadian money. <laughs> it's like oh, coins or something. Canadians listening. Um, Nothing that can be called a loony it should be taken seriously. <laughs> well, I, if your money looks like it came from a Monopoly set, then I'm allowed to make fun of your money. If your um, money is a word that is in the theme song of Tiny Toon Adventures, <laughs> we're allowed to make fun of your money. <laughs> All right, enough enough about making fun of the Canadian money. Um, the creator is a brand Let's make fun and of grotesque. Their concepts. <laughs> brand and grotesque is the name of the people that were making this. Um, they pitched the idea as a peripheral to facilitate or enhance blood donation events, which is a good idea. Um, they were not meant for home use, uh, and only that backers could go to Toronto. Um, on their own dime, <laughs> they wouldn't pay for the tickets or anything like that to go to Toronto and test out the product before they were ready to go on tour with the peripheral at unique blood donation events. Um, a, a good idea in principle. I would be afraid of the thing malfunctioning and taking all of the, my blood. <laughs> like <laughs> That would be my biggest fear, and I wouldn't do it because I'm afraid to give blood at all. <laughs> I hate needles. Um, what do you guys think? Um, do you think you would be willing to sit down and have a game take blood out of you like that? No. Yeah. I'm hardly here's willing why. to have a game take money out of me. Here, yeah. here's, here's why. Because nowhere in that Kickstarter did it say, hey, we're backed by the Canadian equivalent of the American Red Cross. <laughs> Or yeah. we're not, or we're backed by the Canadian equivalent of the Central Blood Bank. I wonder if they're just vampires. Said, we're gonna come to your city and take <laughs> your blood. This is a vampire uh, <laughs> masquerading as That's my problem. blood donation. I, there I mean, is no, no official organization that handles blood donations mentioned anywhere in the Kickstarter. The guy's name is grotesque. And I'm sorry, I'm not letting some random dude with a blood machine hook me up to a, to it and let me play a video game. Look, I may love gaming, but listen. I don't love gaming that much. Listen, Brand, listen. I have I have a wonderful idea for how we can get blood. <laughs> Listen, listen. This is the kind of stuff that comes up with socialized medicine. First of all, um, <laughs> second of all, yeah, hey, we're gonna get the, the tweets at least on that the blood one. Device was free. 
Um, and second of all, I okay, I understand. I I get that they're trying to like maybe spur blood donation. I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's pretty. It's it's an interesting concept. They tried something. Um, but there's a lot of problems with this. <laughs> you, I'm just afraid of, so but that's what Kickstarter's idea. for. Oh, it eventually starts to faint. <laughs> but that's what Kickstarter's for. Is like, let's see what happens. <laughs> Uh, do you remember the Nintendo peripheral that they announced that everybody was so disappointed in with the the, the little thing that attached to your finger that measure, measured your vital signs? Yeah. Like, Nintendo could have done this, too. I mean... Oh, Nintendo's buying this. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> well, well, and they're, I mean, well Nintendo's you. also... And that's we, just going to be the next Wii Fit. We've been talking about <laughs> the, Nintendo... <laughs> Nintendo has been actually legitimately getting into the health industry, like making stuff for the health industry. Like yeah, they are yeah. legit trying to diversify into the health industry and make and make stuff for that's not v- video games or anything. They want to do hardware for that industry. Um, so maybe this could be something they would do. Uh, I don't know I, the logistics. I'm not a doctor, uh, but. That this could be a way to do that. I, I mean, I, I think there's easier ways to give blood, um, but you know. But hey, maybe right. this is something that'll help curtail your uh, freemium addiction, uh, Bobby. Yeah. Before yeah. before we go around and actually answer Bobby's question yeah, yeah. this week, <laughs> I, I I'm gonna throw you a freebie, Canada. There you go. You want to have video games involved with blood donations? How about you give out a free game? You'll get a higher response rate than saying, come play this video game while we draw you. We have reverse Castlevania for you. Vampires win. <laughs> uh, dear sirs, oh. or ma'am, we would like to draw your blood. Hold this video game controller, will ya? The Nintendo version of this would be called, we fit as much as this, our bl- of your blood in this blood bag as possible. Yes. All right. Um, do we do we actually want to answer the question here? Um, uh, the what, NES Advantage Pad. Okay, is that your fa- one of your favorites? That's my all-time favorite. All-time uh, favorite. Okay. What's adapter. your least favorite peripheral? Um. Hmm. You remember the Atari one that was kind of like the uh, the radio dial? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, the paddle. The paddle, the paddle, yeah. Yeah, the paddle. I, I did not like that one. I oh, okay. Okay, uh, Sorg, you want to go? Uh, best or worst peripherals? Yeah. Um, I have to go with... Um, geez, I this is a toss-up. Um, I had addiction with uh, Dance Dance Revolution for a while. Oh, to the point yeah. where we bought Dance the Dance padded, Dance. like the ones with the thick pads of like almost a, probably like a hundred, almost a hundred bucks a piece for the pads. And we had to buy two of them so we could play. I, I, I got probably three or four of the PlayStation two Dance Dance Revolution games over the years. Um, mm-hmm. And we did we did that whole thing. Uh, that was probably the best time I had with peripherals. Uh, I, I second the NES Advantage. It was it was completely awesome. Um, and it may be like, oh, I'm at the arcade, you know, playing my Nintendo game, you know, <laughs> like, like that, because that's what I wanted. That's why I wanted a Nintendo. So I didn't have to bug my mother for quarters, you know, um, <laughs> that, that was it. Just I, buy I, this. It's like a bunch of quarters, mom. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just Girl, like, spend and, all of your quarters. And then this. it did become like when I did bug her for quarters, like, oh, you got video games at home. I'm like, but, but. <laughs> That's Street Fighter. But arcades still are things. Yeah. I want to play arcade games. God. Um, it's 2014 yet. Yeah, arcades aren't gone. Worst, okay, least favorite? worst experience was the for the NES. Uh, remember, there was the power, power Glove, right? Well, there was a yes. second peripheral it's for so people. Bad. What? I'm sorry? It's, it's, it's so, so bad. So bad. Oh, there's a second okay. peripheral that you could play your games with movement, even promising that I could basically play <laughs> punch <laughs> out with this. my bare hands. It was called the U Force, and yeah. uh, I got it. And fire, it, fire, fire! It never, it really, really like I had Top Gun. I was trying it with that. I was trying it with Punch Out when I'd rent it because I never owned Punch Out. 
Uh, I, I just ran it from some time for whatever reason. Uh, well, it became... Can I just point out that the broken unit is right up there? Oh, that's right. I sent that to you. Yeah. So, so years later, I opened the thing up. I opened up the UFORX because I'm like, this is not right. It was just not responding at all. And then, and then Chachi, you remember what we found inside? There's just a row of transistors that are oh, broken, yeah. like, like yeah. just busted down in a line. And it makes me wonder because I cannot, um, I can't. Uh, I, I think mostly I treated my at least my video games and stuff pretty decently, right? Uh, mm. And and I cannot imagine that I did this to this thing. Um, and I and, and I think I was just like cursed with this broken U force for all these years. Um, not that it probably <laughs> really worked all that great, uh, even if it wasn't. But um, it, it that 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 was my worst thing for peripherals, I guess. Dracula's curse, he broke, he broke through you force, and now he's forcing you to take blood out for gaming. Yes! Uh, <laughs> Alright, Mike, Mike, what do you think? Your, your All right, favorite, well, least, um, favorite, least favorite. My favorite was the 32X. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. The leading tower I of Sega. Love... <laughs> yeah, I... Because I, I had this, I had Sega CD, and somehow my Sega Genesis became bigger than the computer. It it's like amazing. Voltron. It's like it was like Voltron. It you really just was. forged everything and together like, to create the ultimate system. And like Knuckles Chaotix formed the head. That's that's <laughs> basically what it was. Um Powering. I remember playing Knuckles Chaotix so much, like that it it made my eyes hurt. <laughs> it was just so much. And my worst. The Super Scope Six. Oh, nice! Oh, no way! Yeah. <laughs> Super Scope so Six was amazing. It had one game, didn't it? It did, but it, it was still one had game. One game. <laughs> you know what else had one game? The uh, mouse and mouse pad. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. That's Mario. Paint. No, that had two games. Oh, two. Mario's missing. That had two. There was another game for the mouse and mouse pad. There was like Mario a missing? Mario and Donkey really Kong, missing. right? Yeah, it oh, was, okay. there was something that there was another thing that used the mouse and mouse pad. Like it was a strange, a if I, it was like thing. a strange Mario and Donkey Kong with like I think it, had, it was the one with like mini Mario's that was kind of like Lemmings or something, if I recall. Like oh, maybe. Uh, by the way, Mike, uh, I, I pulled these yeah, down here lemmings. after because uh, I, I I went and picked up a lot of this kind of stuff like on eBay after the fact years later. So there there's my uh, Star Wars arcade. There's some Knuckles Chaotix. Here's some Primal Rage in the box. <laughs> yes! So, you know, respect to the... Uh, and I think I have a copy of Doom for oh, it, just God. because. And nice. the Doom for 32X, I think, is better than the one mm -hmm. for Sega Saturn. I want to point that out. Nice. Um, yes. So, I, you can tell, depending on what system you're playing it on. Because, you know, on, the, on, the, on DOS, when you could just shrink down the screen so it would play better, um, that's what they did to make it work better on the older consoles. So... Oh, those are right, uh, real good. Real quick, I'm gonna get to my favorite, and my least favorite. My favorite, the light gun from the NES. Um, yes. It was a, a, it was a, a, it was a weapon in a cartoon based on Nintendo, Captain and the Game Master. He used it as a weapon. How awesome is that? To have that in your hand, just shooting things, duck hunts, clay pigeons. Might have only had like one game, but whatever, or two games, whatever. Uh, still awesome. I still have one over there to this day. Um, and my least favorite was, you guys remember the Sega Actuator? It was wow. their attempt at, at a Kinect <laughs> early <laughs> on. Um, it was, it, what, if you're not familiar with it, what it was was a, a like octagon that you stood in and did kicks and stuff like that. Didn't work. <laughs> Kids uh, probably got injured because of it. Oh, no. I, I, I know for a fact that we broke like four lamps. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Wii now with the nunchuck kitten yeah. things. So, all right. There was no safety strap for this. <laughs> you you and, kicked too hard, you fell, you broke a lamp. That's what it was. And with the bodily injur injuries, you had to get blood from the blood sport. <laughs> yeah. So that ties everything together with a nice little bow. And that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, special thanks to Mad Mike for joining us this week. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter at, at MadMike48833. 
A uh, special thanks to Mike Allen at Mike Allen PR for handling the notes and tweets for us. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at, at InsertCoinTB, and you can visit us on the internet on InsertCoinToBegin.com. New articles going up daily, and you can join us live each and every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock on live.sorgatronmedia.com. For at Sorgatron, at Chachi Says, I'm at Bobby FJ Town. Game over. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.